Alright, hey guys, I'm making a quick video to introduce to you the new features in my add-on enhancement technique. Uh, I've updated this for 5.2. So, the biggest request that I've gotten uh, for all my features has been to incorporate my cooldowns into my add-on. I've previously used power ores to create little icons that I stuck right above my bars uh, on my priority tracker. And they worked essentially like this. If you watch these icons, I'm going to drop fire elemental. You'll see that um, what it's showing me is that... Uh, this autocast aura here is showing that it's active and it's counting down from 60 because fire elemental has a 60 second cooldown. Let's use a shorter cooldown. I used astral shift over here and shamanistic rage here. Um, 2 seconds, 12 seconds respectively. The icon dims and now the, the timer changes from um, the active count cooldown to uh, how long until I can cast it again. So I'll pop my other ones, pop some ascendance. You can see how this works. It shows me what's active and how long it will last, and it will, then it will transition to being dimmed, and it will show me how much time is left. So this is a, uh, an important way of being able to tell quickly by glancing um, which abilities that I have active, while at the same time um, being able to tell what my cooldowns are going to be if I look just a little bit closer. So I trial and error a variety of different uh, layout formats and display formats uh, over the course of a couple of weeks. And this is what I decided that I liked best. It was least distracting during a raid while still giving me some um, really good information. I want to point out that uh, the position here is uh, flexible. You can move this anywhere on the screen. It's not tied to the priority tracker. You can also change the scaling. So right now this is scaled up to 1.25. I find the icons being a little bit bigger is easier for me to see. I have kind of bad eyes, so, um, but if you want, you can make it smaller to make your UI a little bit cleaner. Um, I want to point out that, uh, also that the icons here that you, um, see are not configurable in any way. You can't choose which ones to see, and you cannot, uh, change their positions. You can also not change the rows and columns. This is a feature that I am planning on updating in the future, but frankly, uh, configuration UI is the biggest pain in the ass of any program development, uh, in, uh, WoW add-ons. So basically, um, if I had wanted to do that, it would have taken up my entire development time and I wouldn't have gotten it done for 5.2. So I figured functionality was more important than configuration right now. If you're hardcore about it, you can edit the Lua file manually. The code should be fairly easy to, to read. It's in cooldowns.lua. Um, you can just copy and paste and move some things around if you really want to. But um, that feature to make this configurable is on the radar. So um, it will be released probably for 5.3, I hope. I don't know, we'll see. So right now this this uh, layout is fixed. This is the order that I like it in, and since I'm super pro, um, you should probably just get accustomed to my order because you'll find that it's pretty awesome. I will point out also that certain um, certain of these are tracked by buff. So for example, Stormlash. If I drop that, you'll notice that um, it doesn't actually show me a timer, even though there's 10 seconds left. Uh, the reason is because if you look at the buff itself, it does not have a timer. Um, like Lightning Shield has 18 minutes remaining. Stormlash does not have a remaining time. But the active buff that you saw with the squirrels, I'll do the same with uh, Grounding Totem, which uh, works a little bit differently, but um, Stormlash Totem will light up if another person drops it, so it makes it easier for you to avoid double dropping, which is important in raids. All right, so that's this feature. It's pretty cool. Um, I haven't gotten a huge amount of time to beta test it, so it might be a little bit buggy. I'll be fixing it. Um, for the first couple weeks in 5.2, you should probably check back and download new versions because I'll probably be fixing some critical bugs and things like that. So, you know, this is a beta version slash lightly tested, whatever. Um, I made a couple of improvements to the configuration as well. I buried, um, I broke this down into a cooldowns page so you can configure this separately with a scaling factor. The alpha factor determines how much the icons dim. Um, I like it to be about 15%, but you can experiment with it as, as you like. You can also disable this if you don't like it. If you're using a different cooldown tracking mechanism and you like that better, you can disable this here by unchecking this box. Um, I broke the bindings into its own page. I want to make a quick note about the bindings because people have pointed this out a few times and complained and asked me to fix this feature. Um, they've asked me to make it so that more than one action bar works. And the truth is that I am searching all 120 action slots that WoW offers, so I, I don't know what else to do. I think the problem is this, like I'm using Domino's, right? And if you look at the way Domino's works, um, these buttons are not actually action slots. They're, they're special Domino's ones. So like, um, I don't wanna rebind anything right now, but when you rebind a Domino's key, it will tell you something like bound 
bound X to Domino's Action 26 or whatever. The name of the ability is not Action Slot 1, it's like Domino's Action and then some number. So basically I think the issue is that certain bar mods are not supported. They don't use the standard action slots and I'm not going to try to reverse engineer what they call themselves. I don't even know where to begin doing that, so I'm just not going to support that. The bindings is totally a convenience and it's primarily to allow you to quickly switch when you change your talents, when you want to switch to Ancestral Guidance versus Healing Tide Totem, you can just click the icon and then hit a key. And it, it makes it faster for me when I'm in the middle of a raid and I change talents and I want to rebind it. It's easier for me to do that than to do this kind of jazz where I, you know, go and find the, you know, it's just stupid. So it's just a convenience. If it doesn't work for you, then so be it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this bindings configuration UI, so basically take it or leave it. The primary functionality changes I want to point out uh, are two things. First, um, updates for um, for your uh, talents. I currently now support correct priority lists for Unleash Fury, Primal Elemental, Elementalist, and Elemental Blast. When you switch them, it will automatically pick the right priority list and it will update it live. So um, if I change to Primal Elementalist right now, my priority list will change. Unleash Elements will no longer be before Storm Strike and Lava Lash. Okay. So this updates in real time as soon as you change your talents, okay? The other thing uh, related to that is I've fixed the bug that has existed since day one where um, the add-on will only respect you if your primary talent tree is enhancement. Now you can have a secondary talent tree right now. You see my first one's enhancement, my second one's restoration. There was a bug where people who had enhancement as their second talent spec couldn't use my add-on. That bug has been fixed, I believe. I haven't tested it, but I, I saw where the coding error was and I fixed it wherever I saw it. So. Hopefully that works now, um, so hopefully everyone will be happy, okay? So it, it the uh, priority list is now correct. Another bug that you will not notice that people have been asking for is I've changed the add-on to now be localized, so um, foreign clients should now be able to use this add-on because I no longer refer to the spells by their English names, but rather their IDs, so this should work now. Um, again, I haven't tested it because I don't have foreign language clients and I have I don't have an international partner with like a German client or something that can test it. So if you happen to be a, uh, a European player and you're interested in helping me work out some localization bugs, please contact me via YouTube. I'd be happy to work with you to get you a localized version. Um, but I want to talk about the combat options really quick because this is really important, okay? Um, I finally added the ability to control your lightning bolt priority. Previously, I only showed you lightning bolt as your priority. Um, if and only if you had five stacks of Maelstrom Weapon, which is not really great. What you really want to be able to control is um, how many stacks you should cast at, but it's more than that because just indicating how many Maelstrom stacks isn't really what you're after. What you really care about is how long your Lightning Bolt cast is going to be. And at three stacks, it's going to be whatever 60%, um, or I should say 40% of 2.5 is, right? So instead of trying to figure all that out, what I did is I created a slider that says uh, what your maximum acceptable cast time for Lightning Bolt is. So if you set this to one second, that means that as long as the cast time of Lightning Bolt is less than one second, and this is affected by all haste effects, uh, both static and temporary, so when you're under Bloodlust, this uh, value is going to change the number of stacks that Maelstrom affects you at. Um, as soon as Lightning Bolt's cast time is less than this value, it will specify it in its priority list. So basically, um, right now, uh, my three stack of Maelstrom Weapon is a 0.9 second cast Lightning Bolt. So by setting this to one second, um, I will be casting Lightning Bolt at Maelstrom three stack. Um, and you can change this to, to be higher or lower, okay? The next important setting is the maximum time to wait for an ability with higher priority. So frequently what will happen in combat, you may have noticed this as well, you'll have a situation where both, let's say, Earthshock and Storm Strike are both coming off cooldown right around the same time. If Earthshock is 0.1 seconds sooner than Stormstrike, I will show you Earthshock as a higher priority. And this usually is not a problem, but if you're super mid-maxing and you do this over the course of a, like a 10 minute fight, it can make a difference because it can affect how many times you cast Earthshock versus Stormstrike. If you get even two or three more Stormstrikes in than Earthshocks, you'll get a pretty big DPS increase. So what this does is it allows you to essentially treat every ability as if it's cooldown with 0.5 seconds sooner because I've set this to 0.5. What this means is if Earthshock and Stormstrike are both coming off cooldown within 0.5 seconds of each other, Stormstrike will be listed as priority first and your add-on will basically tell you to wait to cast Stormstrike before casting Earthshock. 
So that's what this slider lets you do, okay? So it's a it's a min-maxing comprehension thing that you can you can customize. This last checkbox basically says always cast lightning bolt as a filler regardless of its cast time. What this means is, let's say you have a 2.5 second gap in your rotation and zero stacks of maelstrom weapon. Uh, what this means is I will show you to cast lightning bolt, um, even if the cast time is full, a full duration. Um, this is an option in case you want to do it. Um, I actually usually leave this unchecked because I don't like that option, but there are some people who have asked me to allow that to show hard casting. So it's an option now, and um, you know, hopefully these combat options will let you min-max a little bit harder. I may actually add in another checkbox to let you hard cast Lava Burst, because that might actually prove to be a DPS gain as a filler, but we'll see. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to be uploading this add-on shortly to Curse. It should be available by the time you see this video, and um, again, this is a beta version. I haven't raided with this version for many weeks, so there are going to be some bugs and some kinks that I'm going to be working out, but if you find a major bug that's impacting your gameplay, please contact me via YouTube. Try to give me the best scenario you can to reproduce it. The Lua error if, would be ideal, and um, I hope you guys like it. My next milestone is uh, 10,000 downloads, so tell your friends. Take care, guys. Good luck in 5.2.